I got it. People was crazy about me because I did it. That's right. And you know, and everything changed only because I was a little brave. Yet attitude means how can I proactively change the way I think? How can I proactively increase my life? How can I proactively create better relationships and better work situations for me to enjoy it? And welcome to the GAP, the Get Attitude Podcast, the gap, bridging the gap from who you are to who you want to become and helping you get from where you are to where you want to go. Hello, I'm Glenn Bill, founder of the University of Attitude, keynote speaker and the author of the international best-selling book, The ABCs of Attitude. I've been so fortunate to help tens of thousands of people through our keynotes, our seminars, and this podcast, Get Attitude. Attitude, it is the secret formula to success in your business and in your life. And this podcast will help you get yours. So let's get some. Hello, everybody. I am so excited to be working with Attitude Booster number seven, Grow or Die. And our guest today, the fabulous Patrizia Marin from Italy is where she's at today, is a friend of mine who I met at the Tony Robbins Date with Destiny. We were partners. You just never know who God's going to put in your life. And this woman has done so much. You talk about growing or dying Wait till you get a piece of Patrizia and all the wonderful things she does. So, Patrizia, welcome to the Get Attitude podcast. Thank you. Thank you, Glenn, to have me with you. It was is like, uh, I never thought about that. When we met uh, in, uh, in California, at, attending to Tony Robbins events, we were buddy together, we were exercising, learning, and now we are here together. Amazing. It, Life is amazing. It is, and I've been following you, and you just do so much cool stuff. Uh, one thing, we're going to talk about your main business, and, and we may as well just talk about that off the top. You um, have created something, because you've grown so much, called the Marco Polo Experience. Let's uh, just give me a little quick rundown on what the Marco Polo experience is, who do you help, uh, and how might our gappers, our listeners, uh, tune in to you, go to your Facebook page at Marco Polo, and possibly get some attitude, get some help to, be, to find out where they are to where they want to be. Okay, so all uh, I, my degree is in inter- international political science, and I have also a law degree. And my my vocation was always uh, international um, experience. So since very young, I started to travel the world. I started to learn many languages. I, you know, I really enjoy uh, experience of traveling. But, you know, just if you just travel, you you are a tourist. So I want to experiment in the countries. And also I want to be paid for it because, you know, at some point uh, you have to work for it. So... Instead of doing a kind of a regular job, I use my money and my holidays to travel, I decided to do the opposite. I decided to travel for my clients and to be, and to be paid for it. Yeah. So I, <laughs> I developed the skills I need to do this. And uh, I had a, a different huge experience in uh, important international companies. And at some point, as you said, you grow or you die. And uh, I decided to go for my way. I decided to grow. I take a lot of challenges. And I create my own company with my own style. Let's say with my attitude, because everybody is really different. And uh, now I'm very happy because really I create uh, the lifestyle uh, I always dream for. That's wonderful. Yeah. Go ahead. So tell me, when you decided, I want to start my own company... Yeah. What were you afraid? How did you push yourself through to go ahead and I tell do you, it? I tell you something. Many t- okay, I teach also the university or my, I can many times I'm a speaker and like you, and many times they ask me what make you to take the decision. Many times I didn't take the decision. I was in a nightmare for some reason because always you face nightmares in a company, in business, and maybe your country has problem, maybe your company, maybe your client. So every time I was in kind of a very complicated situation, I cry for a while, but very short <laughs> because it's not my attitude. 
first yeah. of all. And second, because I can't do it. I really need to work. I really need to be, you know, committed. So I find my way to grow. And that was, uh, for me, the right way. And yes, I was always totally scared. I was always said, what I'm doing? Why I'm doing that? Why I, I don't go back to my family home and have a nice life instead to take risks? But taking risks uh, always gave, gave me so much. So now I'm doing the opposite. I'm totally excited to, ch- to be challenged every day. Sometimes, you know, everybody prefers to be in comfort zone. It's a human being nature. Yes. But then when you mm-hmm. learn how to challenge yourself, and you know the challenge is just a challenge. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose, but it's part of the game. Huh? And if you train yourself to challenge, and then life is an adventure every day. I love it. Just like Marco Polo, a big adventurer, yes, right? I, I really, I really was inspired by him because he is Venetian like me. He was a writer, like I'm a journalist too. He was traveling the world for business, but he was mainly an explorer. He was a kind of guy in the middle of business and diplomacy because he was representing the Pope to the Gengis Khan court. And I have all these skills and I love this kind of life. I'm not just a business person. I'm not just a kind of uh, ambassador of my country. I'm not just a writer. I'm not just a public affair. I really enjoy doing what I'm doing. And enjoying this, I try to create, um, a, let's say, a product that my client can enjoy. Because people usually want to uh, explore other markets, but mainly they don't have the skills. Maybe they don't speak the languages. Maybe they don't have, uh, they don't have this uh, adventurous uh, experience. Maybe they don't experiment, experiment other country, or they, they don't have you know, enough uh, time. So I'm doing that it for them. So you don't take the risk of exploring. I'll do it for you. You just take the good. That is what I'm uh, actually doing. That's fantastic. Now tell me, um, when I think about all these wonderful things that you do, I know you're a keynote speaker. What are, what are words of inspiration that you give your audiences? Or we have people, again, that are in the middle of transitions in life, that are, that are attacking life, that maybe are not taking the risk. But when you're a keynote speaker, what's the one or two biggest things that you like to communicate to your audience about you and or how they should live? Okay. Uh, I think you have to start to consider taking risk for something different. It's not taking risk. Problems are not problems. It's just everyday life. I think we have to give uh, uh, the, the, the sense of the things uh, very normal. You know, it's a uh, why fair? Why don't go for it? If you stay in your position, you are losing most. So really, I think to be brave or maybe also a little crazy sometimes. That is the first tips. What do you have to lose? I, I tell you an example very simple. Last week, uh, you follow me in social networks, so you know. Yeah. I was uh, there. There were a very big conference in Dubai about a forum for world uh, for women. Uh, very very interesting big event, and I tried to register myself. I was not able because it was like VIP people, very high level, close since one month. And then a friend of mine called me. Do you join me there? I'm sorry, I couldn't register. So I'll do it for you. So the day after, I went there and I had the badge from CNN. So I was very wow. Not just I was there. I was very wow. Yes. And as he was introducing uh, Ivanka Trump, that was the main guest, I told him very nicely. Oh, I know that you are going to interview her. I really would like to meet her. Maybe, you know, I was trying to flirt around to have a chance. And he told me, impossible. She's, you know, with a lot of bodyguards in very safe environment. You know, she has a kind of protocol. I say, okay, maybe I'm a lucky girl. I said, okay. And we give up on that. Then I went to the conference. I find the right place in the conference because front row is an attitude. You have always to find your front row. Yes. It's not the first line sometimes, but not be in the middle, be close to the corridor, be in the strategic place. Think strategic. That is something that I always I 
teacher. Wonderful. And I was near to the co the corridor, and uh, then after the speech, she she was leaving and say, "Oh, Ivanka, you have a beautiful dress. You know, we're girls." <laughs> she was she was amazing. She was brilliant. Everything, but you know, oh yes, thank you. I say, may I have a picture with you? And she said, yes. I took a selfie, but I tell you something: three thousand people. I was the only one that got the the selfie with her, That's and awesome. I became instantly the most powerful lady in the room. And my, what what was what I did? I just asked. That is so fantastic. We just interviewed. Is, we we just interviewed yes. Clint Arthur about celebrity yeah. attack. Jason, go to Patrizia Marin's uh, Facebook page. You'll see the picture of her and Ivanka Trump. Patrizia, that's why I love you so much because you just. No, but it's uh, just an example. It's not like you know. I was not like something planned. But sure. I say, worst, worst scenario, she didn't answer me, or she was just going for her way, or could be not possible. Now, but th then uh, I got it. People was crazy about me because I did it. That's right. And you know, and everything changed only because I was a little brave. Was I... not like a crazy shoe, you know. <laughs> Well, it's so cool. That is such a great story. I want to talk about, I'm very intrigued. You are, I believe, the CEO of um, the MMA in Dubai. Is that correct? Or tell me what your <laughs> affiliation with MMA fighting yes. is. Yes, okay. A few years ago, uh, three or four years ago, uh, a friend of mine asked me, uh, why we don't develop uh, MMA sports now? It's so trendy and so on. And so we create a new fighting promotion called Magnum FC. And for, <laughs> I think for a long time, I was the only one lady in the MMA circuit. They called me Lady MMA. It was so funny. And I learned a word. I never thought in my life to be close to this sport and to this adventure. But, you know, life sometimes gives you strange opportunities. And again, to be a little crazy or a little brave really allow me to know the sport industries. And now I'm very close to Dubai Sport Council. I'm working in sport uh, business that was never in my Unbelievable. mind. Unbelievable. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it's so curious. And i tell you something about Tony Robbins. Uh, last September, he came to Dubai. And he had a wonderful, uh, we had a wonderful event. It was a very special event. And then I had the chance to take a picture with him. Yes. To, yeah. There it and is. And he told me, he turned to me and said, but we already met somewhere. And say, yes, we met at the fight in Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, this is the selfie we took in the T-Mobile Arena at the McGregor fight, the McGregor uh, Khabib fight. So, yes, and you were you in Khabib's. Know. You were in Khabib's corner. You told me. Yeah, I was absolutely in the Khabib corner. I was totally scared because I saw him flying from the cage, jump on the, on the people, you know, and everything became crazy. But it was so funny. And you see, you never th think that you go in MMA. Uh, environment you learn a sport you learn an environment you learn an industry you learn a business you become somebody and then you met tony robbins that is a totally different business <laughs> but he remember you because probably he met you in a different environment not in a room not in a uh, speaking session something like that and that is you know again i think to be a little brave uh, is really the key i really like what you said that strategic placement you know the people that listen to to us today they're 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 in their lives and the way for them to bridge the gap is is to understand that you have that proximity matters and that you know where you want to go you know how to bridge the gap you know the people that you need to be around but you maybe don't know how to strategically place where you are and that no, is okay. a beautiful beautiful message yes go ahead Proximity, sorry, Glenn, proximity is really something very important because you can dream to meet people, but if you are not in the right place, uh, never happen. Sometimes sometimes doesn't happen, but statistically, if you are there, something happens because there is always something magic when you put your energy, your dream, your desire, it's something like, you know, things happen. I and then agree. there is something, even when I tell you, be brave. Yes, but if you are in proximity, you are braver. Because, you know, for me, if I was not in the room with Ivanka Trump or Tony Robbins, it was impossible to fulfill my goal. 
I, if I was around, sometimes happens, sometimes doesn't happen. When doesn't happen, you learn how to do better next time. You choose a better place. You speak with the right people. You know, that is something that you go, by the way, you know, close and close because you train yourself too. Yeah. Now, Jason, I think that picture of Ivanka is in her feed. If you're able to just go to her feed, it, I know she posted it. Patrizia, let me ask you this. You obviously have faced tough times in your life. Could you talk to Ooh, me? Could you talk? So many times. Yes. So, what, so I, many. what I want to know is uh, just give us a story about you had a tough time and then you grew through it. That's what I would love to know. Get, just give me an example when you had a tough time and you said, oh, boy. I need to grow through this. What's that story? What's that like? How did you grow? And then how did you overcome to become the champion that you are? Okay. Usually, I think uh, life, uh, many people tell you that life gives you a lot of a uh, chance. I think life doesn't give you a lot of chance. For example, last year, one year ago, not very far, I was just walking in my house. I, I was walking in uh, and I jump in one step, one step. I'm a kind of brave art, you know. I go to die with obviously. Sharks. I go in the savannah with lions. Uh, oh. I do zip line. I do everything. No, I was at home with the stupid uh, shoes, uh, and uh, I fly from one step, uh, and I broke everything in my ankle. I spent uh, four months in bed, uh, and other three months in rehabilitation, and so on. And in my schedule, I had to come. For in, in Washington for the prayer breakfast with President Trump and all the leaders <laughs> from all over the world. I have an event with Putin in Italy and I have the Pope visiting Abu Dhabi. That's oh my, my God. Schedule. That's three pretty and everything, big... And everything crashed. Crashed in one minute. Yes. So, so my amazing schedule that I worked all my life with gone in a minute. And I have a business. I'm a Marco Polo. I'm a traveler. And my clients are used that they say, they call me, okay, let's meet tomorrow. I say, yes, also if I have to fly 10 hours. I'm so used. And I was in a bed, in a couch, without even move from my couch because I couldn't walk at all. I had a long, uh, like, like four hour surgery and so on. And uh, I have uh, to survive because my business has to survive. I was going to lose all my clients because you can imagine if you don't see your clients for six months, being yeah, in not the good. East. Not to mention and world we, leaders who are on your schedule. Did you end up meeting with them? No, I didn't meet any one of them, uh -huh. but I used this time to change completely my business model good and to you. become a very kind of sleeping Marco Polo. So <laughs> I learned that you can, you know, find your way to change completely your environment because you don't have any chance. Many times in my life, it's not because I have a chance. It's because I don't have any chance. I have my chance to lose all my business. Yes. No. I have the chance uh, to travel. No. I have the chance. But uh, what I can do is to change the way to do things. I love because it. Because at the end, uh, my clients are always my client. Me, I always me. So you just <clears throat> change your uh, skills. Patricia. And maybe tools. Pat and you reorganize yourself around it. But then uh, these things teach me a lot uh, because I learned that I don't need to be everywhere to do my business. Okay. I learned, okay, it's not my nature, it's not my attitude. I love to be on the plane, to be somewhere different. Uh -huh. But uh, you can set up the, pro the way to do it everywhere. And that uh, was a kind of growing again. So it was a very interesting experience again for me. Tell me, Patrizia, who, where did, you are so amazing. And I love, if you guys, you need to follow Patrizia Marin. If you, if your life sucks and it's boring and you want to live through somebody, follow her on Facebook. Trust me, you're going to be like, oh my God, this woman does everything. But here's what I want to know. <laughs> Patrizia, who gave you your attitude? Like who, where did you get this bravado, this bravery uh, who was your attitude coach that really shifted things for you? I think or, or your that, mentor. Uh, I think that everybody has a kind of brave inside themselves, a kind of challenge. Everybody dream. Mm -hmm. The only thing that we are not used to train uh, to dream. Ah. We are used to do what we have to do and then dream later. I don't know. You are uh, used to do okay. I have to do 
my job and then holidays. I have, for example, I do an example that's something that happened to me. I was always my dream to live on the beach. Yeah. I think it's not only my dream, no. So one day when I will retire, I will go, I will move to the beach. Then I think to myself, but maybe when I'm retired, I'm not even interested in the beach. Maybe I won't just lie down in a couch or read a book because mainly, you know, if you retire, you are tired. Yes. And so I decided to move to the beach now. So three years ago, I moved to Dubai. I live in the beach. I I set up my business there. And uh, it changed completely the game. Who gave me the attitude? I think everybody has this attitude, but what I did, you did, other people did, that uh, is like training this attitude. Yes. We went to Tony Robbins, we went, I went, I'm sure you did, to see many other coaches. I love some of them, some, some other no, but always I learn something. Yes. And if I have one thing that really everybody teach you is go ahead, challenge yourself. Go next, find what you like, try to reach it. Yes. And that's, uh, I think, the difference in my attitude that is I'm always training myself on this direction. I it's like it. if you do sport, if you train every day, you are st- strong in muscles. If you train uh, your brain with the learning languages, you're stronger. And if you train your attitude, you're stronger in attitude. Amen. Well, how many languages do you speak? I'm fluent in five languages, and now I'm studying Arabic. Oh, my gosh, because five is just not enough. Again, Gappers, listen to this incredible female, this cr- incredible woman. She's, she learned three. She said, no, I want to learn four. I want to learn five. Are you sitting there stagnant? Are you sitting there going, that's enough? When, when, you, when you listen to Patrizia, isn't it a wonderful way to tap into her energy and be... Like, how can I be more like this incredible human being that all she does is grows, she grows, she grows, and you look at her fantastic smile, and it's it's evident. <laughs> People that are but always I, growing are are so happy. Yes, go ahead. I, I want to tell you something. I think if you start to uh, grow and learn how to grow, you then enjoy, become like the adrenaline. It's when you do something you know, crazy when you jump with a parachute, then you do again, you do again. And growing is the same because you grow, you learn something and then you add something else uh, and then things happen around you. And so it's like, it's really creating the magic, uh, but you have to do it, simply doing it. So you have to train uh, like to grow, a train to be brave and a little crazy because why we think crazy is bad. No crazy, little crazy is cool. That's, yes, if it I is. was not crazy many times, I never got. What uh, was your favorite thing like to learn, Patrizia? What, what's your favorite thing to learn or what's your favorite thing to do? Okay, my favorite uh, first one is to travel to discover new countries. That is always like, I'm always excited when you say, okay, this year I want to know, for example, for me now, it's time for Saudi Arabia, it's time for Middle East, I'm curious to know my neighbor. But, you know, I think if I think in my life, every decade was, one was for South America, was one was for Europe, right. that was for Asia, oh. now in the Middle East. But last year I had a little taste of Africa. So what the curious me the most is to travel, to explore, to know people, but always uh, being Marco Polo, probably, I want to do business there. It's not like just enjoy a new place, a new nature, a new restaurant. Then I say, okay, what I can do here? What I can do for my clients here? Yes. Who can be interested in this area? And then things happen. But I say, okay, I have visited Saudi. Oh, wow, great. I want to develop the business there. Let's try. Let's go. Okay. And so you live in Dubai, though, on a beach. Is that correct? That's your home? Uh, mainly, yes. When I don't travel. <laughs> <laughs> that is so. Well, Patrizia, you have been such a light and such a gift to our gappers. We've had so much fun with you, Patrizia. So now what we're going to do is play our little game called Knowledge Through the Decades, okay? Okay. All right. So, Patrizia, you may remember the day you were born. I'd love to know where you were born, first of all. And then tell me the attitude lesson that you can get or that our gappers can get from a newborn baby. Okay, I was born in March, so I'm Pisces. Yeah. Uh, what I remember from my young age was like I was always curious, that's for sure. Yes. And I 
I was always also when I started the school, I was like always, uh, you know, a kind of uh, a good one, but not because I was a good girl, because I really like to learn. It's something that I always enjoy. And, and where were you born? What country? I was born in Italy, ah. in Treviso, near Venice. Fantastic. So I want you to think about when you were 10 years old, you were in third or fourth grade. Do you remember any story from third or fourth grade that changed your attitude or that was a that was a story that changed the way you thought about things when you were in grade school? Uh, yes, I, I had, you know, I, I was uh, born in a small village, in a small place, and everybody has a kind of uh, life already set it up. And uh, but also when I was a kid, I was I, I was dreaming to travel. That was unusual. It was not like uh, you know kids doesn't have this desire. Usually they have other desire to do some sports, some activities, to be a dancer or something else. I really like uh, you know read the books about adventure, and I want to be part of this adventure. That is fantastic. And so now. From that little girl, you became a young woman who probably went to university. I know you're very well studied. Talk to me about when you were at university when you were 20. Um, what was going on in your life? What were you thinking? What was a story that might okay. have shaped your attitude? I, okay. I left uh, the, my small village. Then I did the secondary in Castelfranco Veneto. And then I moved uh, to Padua University. That is the second uh, oldest university in the world. Mm. Wow. When I did my degree, I had the desk of Galileo Galilei. Oh, my gosh. My yeah, something very cool. And uh, for me... When I moved uh, there and uh, studied international political science, uh, the best experience I had is to meet uh, my professor of international law. And uh, for me, it was a kind of dream because he was a genius. Uh -huh. And uh, after the third year of the university, I started to work with him. And we worked together almost 15 years. Wow. Uh, so it was a really... Uh, an unbelievable experience. You yeah. know, usually you read the book of your professor. Right. I was close to him uh, learning and working so long. It was something that changed completely the game. Yes. It was a huge challenge. Yes. And yeah, so that's, that's like was, that's like attitude booster number five. Have a mentor and copy them. Obviously, he was a big mentor. Uh, for mentoring me. is um, for me, mentor is always so important. Also, yeah. small things. You know, maybe a, a simple fighter, 20 years old, in a cage. Yes. You learn something. You, you have to have mentoring for everything. Yes. For everything. I love Small, it. Small, big, huge, you know. But it's, a, it's something that inspires you because everybody has a talent. And if you are curious, you can learn something from everybody. I love it. I love it. And now, uh, from university, you became a 30-year-old. Do you remember turning 30? Do you remember your birthday? Did you have a party? And when you were 30, what is the attitude lesson you learned? Tell me about you at 30. Okay, my 30 was uh, was uh, nice. It was a nice experience because I remember that I got the chance uh, to win, uh, to you know, to be hired from a very important bank. Oh. And I remember that I went for the trial because, you know, my family wants, you know, I think, I don't know, but every family wants you work in a bank, no? It's yes. normal. Yes. So I went there and we were like 500 people to do a kind of a written text. But I was very busy because I had a birthday party, I remember. And it, I was the first one that to complete, but not because I was the best one, because when I didn't know the answer, I was like just putting cross and go ahead because I have to go. <laughs> My plan was never to go to work in the bank. So I was re really, I was expecting to be the last one. Uh -huh. So at the end of the written text, I was the first one. Oh Oof. my. Ouch. And now what I do? But uh, and then you have a kind of to have a kind of a, uh, an interview, yes. and only like uh, twenty four of us had the interview. Wow! And I was a very bad girl because I didn't want to go there. So I said, "No, I don't believe to go in the office every day. I don't believe in to have a boss. I don't believe, you know, all the things, the worst things you can say in an interview. Yeah, you know, if you have rules, the ten things you have to do, I did the opposite because it really was for me no." <laughs> At the end, uh, I, I, I was first again. Oh, my God. And then they want to hire me. Say, why? I'm the worst. 
because we want somebody with the attitude of Sahan. But at the end, I gave up. I yes. said not to go. Yes. Still, it's almost 20 years. They still tell me, you are the only one that refused to go to the bank. And I still think that is the best things I did in my life. Yeah, but so, and because, I think, go ahead. I'm sorry, Patricia. Yes. No, and that, that, that I really, really realized that you have to go in the direction you want. Don't take things, uh, you know, uh, discover where you are, where you want to go and find your way. I love so, it. And don't be, and don't be pressured. Yeah. Don't let somebody, you know, the, the vision needs to be yours, not someone else's. No, but not only someone else. Also someone, something comfortable. But because it's very comfortable to have a, a, a job that you have your salary, you don't take any risk. But you, you, you see me that I was really feeling like I was Marco Polo sitting in a room every single day, finish my job at five o'clock, go to the gym. I could die. <laughs> I and it was very you. clear to me. You are very so clear good. I want you to go. I want to know about your 40th birthday party. And I, I know, didn't you, weren't you working for this, um, the prime minister of Italy at some point? Yes. In the meanwhile, from my 30 and 40, I was working uh, from different prime ministers in Italy uh, because, you know, I have this degree. And uh, I really like uh, politics and uh, mainly the, you know, the old geopolitical issues. That is something that always interested me. Yes. And I was, you know, mainly based in Rome. I was traveling. It was very interesting. And in meanwhile, I was working for a very important company in PR, Madrid Affairs, something like that. Yes. And then uh, when everything looked like perfect, I was in the right age, right solution, right position. Something went very wrong. The company was working, failed for an international big scandal. And the, the, the prime minister I was working with uh, lost the election. So in my 40, I was alone, without a job, without uh, uh, a company, without prime ministers. I, wow, and now what I do? And started to do interviews here and there. And people told me that I was overqualified. I spoke too many languages. I was used to make so much money. So nobody was to offer me a job. So my mom, that is always a mom, told me, hello? Hello, we told got me, you. My mom told me, come back to Treviso. You can work in a shop. You can be kind of, you know, me. So mom, they don't hire me. They are, <laughs> they hire girls that is 20 years old. You know, they have no chance. So I have no chance. I decided to set up my own company. Had a girl. Because what's the chance? Yes. So I created the company I want. I gave finally the name I wanted, Marco Polo Experience. And uh, a lot of clients that I have previously, like being part of a big company, decided to come with me. And 10 years later, because now it's 10 years later, they are still with me. I love it. I love it. And in the yeah, in the <sighs> last uh, the last decade you wanna mention, I decided to leave my country to move to another country because I wanna live in a beach, <laughs> <laughs> and I wanna live in the future, and probably Middle East, uh, Dubai, especially is the future actually. Well, that's that is so cool, and you are a uh, very young fifty, so you get to answer the last part of this, which is, what's the attitude <laughs> lesson at fifty? What is in your future, and what what do you want to tell all the people who are listening to you? What is your empowering message for those people that are looking to bridge the gap, that are looking to become something bigger and to create more success and fulfillment? Tell us what the future lies and what your biggest uh, inspirational message to our gappers are. For, for me, you have really to dream big. Uh, because for me, it was if you ask me 20 years ago to live in a beach in Dubai, to have my own company, to be... You know, like this it was kind of more than a dream. Yes. So dream big and then start. Small steps, the more skills, little brave, proximity, mentorship, all things. It's all items that you need. But big dream, design your dream and try to make it happen. Because dream is not a dream, it's your life. If your dream is just a dream, what means dream? It's something that never happened. Yes. Design yes. your life and try to get it. Sometimes you don't go where you have in mind, but sometimes life brings you even in a better solution on opportunities that you never even think about. But this <sighs> is the most important. Design and go. Design and go. I love it. Patrizia, you have helped us grow from 
the little girl from Italy to the uh, political, international political science girl that studied at Galileo's desk with a prominent professor to working for a prime minister of Italy to starting her own business and starting something in the MMA. When we talk about growing or dying, you are growing. I can't wait to see what the second <laughs> half of your life works with or what the second half of your life brings to you. And I hope that I get to share in that with you. And I can't thank you enough for your uh, love and your kindness and your experience, the Marco Polo experience that you just gave the gappers today. You are phenomenal. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, Glenn. I'm so happy to meet you again in this uh, circumstance. Uh, and you see, our mentor gave us something. Yes, that is true. Uh, <clears throat> all right. Well, gappers, this will conclude Attitude Booster number seven. Grow or die with the great Patrizia Marin. And uh, we will see you on the next episode of The Gap. <laughs>